Hey, how you doing? This is Dr. Dave and Anderson with uh, this week's blog slash blog entitled Myths and Mortals. One of one here. <clears throat> Hello. Wow. Those past blogs were rather heavy, but certainly something to think about. Absolutely. Always, always think. Mm -hmm. I love this approach to healthcare and wellness because it puts the onus back squarely upon the shoulders of that which causes each of us our distress and travail, happiness and hope, the being himself. That's where it all comes from. It's you. Not really, you know, not really that either. One lives in a world that is governed by the decisions and choices he makes, or more importantly, doesn't make. The health and wellness of a person are so much more important than bugs, stress, vitamins, exercise, organic foods, or junk foods, or whatever the latest podcast heroes are pro proclaiming. Yeah, it, it really is. It's, it's more than a body. You know, you gotta keep in mind, the body, you can see it, you can feel it, you can sense it, you're aware of it. But um, if you're gonna spend time taking care of a body, uh, Probably heading the wrong direction. It's not gonna be as fruitful as other avenues. The effect that any or all of these things have upon a person is based for the most part on what that person thinks these things will do for him or for him. Will do to him or for him. One, one can only be harmed by what he doesn't know about or is unfamiliar with, or that which he has decided is harmful. Yeah, and that's an important point. Once you know about something, you cannot adversely be affected by it or harmed by it, right? Once you're familiar with something, you know? Um, I have this chipper that I use at the house and Dr. Diane doesn't like it. She walks away from it. She's afraid of it. It's noisy, it's loud, it's everything else. But, you know, stay away from this end because this is where the blades are and you're gonna do fine. Um, you gain that familiarity, and uh, you just really can't be harmed by it. It's the stuff that you don't know about or that you actually think will hurt you or harm you that does. Mm -hmm. hmm. I'll do my best with this name here. Epictetus. Here's what Epictetus, the Roman Stoic, said. Who then is invisible? invincible? Who then is invincible? The one who cannot be upset by anything outside their reason to choice? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. You would be invincible. You cannot be upset or bothered by anything mm -hmm. that was outside what you decide that you could be bothered by or that you know about and things along those lines. So, so when you get this uh, email thing, or not an email, but uh, you know, on the cell phones, and now you're supposed to decide whether or not uh, the Kardashians should uh, vacation in Spain or France this year. Uh, unless, unless you think you want to be bothered by it, you won't be. You can make that decision. You should make that decision. You should actually throw your phone away yeah. if that's all you're going to get on it. Right after this video, just, just toss it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Why does it make you feel better? Because you say it does. Right. Why does it make you feel worse? Because you say it does. Right. Why does it help or harm? Wow. Why does it help or harm? Because you say you it say does. It does. Yeah, I know it sounds too easy. And to be honest, there are a number of not so good things associated with any being that unfortunately have a say as well. But it was the being himself who created these not so good things and said they should have a say. Yeah, you get the idea. You're, you're in control, but there's other things that we created that we also put in control and said that they could be in control. So, you can easily remove you're, control. You're still the one that created all the good stuff and all the bad stuff that happens to you. It's a little like when you're on a playground and you're just kind of making up a game and, and you're making up rules and you kind of realize, well, one of these rules just kind of really butts up against the whole season reason for playing. Let's, let's just get this rule out of here. Let's make this a better game. Yep. Let's see. Regardless, one simply cannot blame a hot dog or the poor quality of city water for their poor health any more than one can claim that carrot sticks and push-ups keep a person healthy and well. To do so would be to claim that there is a cause greater than oneself governing his life. At the end of the day, one is because one says or thinks so. That's heavy. 
that's really great, but it is. You know, as soon as you start saying, this is responsible for why I'm this way, that's responsible for why I'm this way, this is, that is, you are assigning cause to something uh, that, and you are suggesting that there is something bigger and has a greater influence over you and your life and your future than you. And I got news for you, it doesn't exist. Hot dogs can't make you sick unless you think that they can or you want them to. Um, if you're sick, it's for another reason. You can blame a hot dog all you want, but uh, you'll find you won't get better because it's not the thing that caused it. In the end, it was Joey Chestnut that shoved 64 <laughs> hot dogs, man. It was him. Yeah. He's slowing up, man. <laughs> I think uh, I think he's getting there. He's got to. He's had to have done some damage. I, I don't know that he'll ever get the seventies again. Yeah, we got some twenty-year-old rising up the ranks right now. Let's see. Do, do, do. We get this idea that there is a force beyond us that is influencing our lives. I think I just said that. Interesting. Our lives and the things that happen to us or don't happen to us. Some claim that it is, is a, it is a supreme being, or even the universe itself. But I can assure you, and as crazy as it might sound, there's no force or power beyond the being themselves. Right. Isn't that wild? There's nothing beyond you. I mean, you are this all-knowing, all-powerful um, life energy, life force. And uh, there's no greater force or power or um, intelligence beyond you. Isn't that why? So when, when people say, oh, the universe caused this, or I just throw it to the universe and let the universe take care of it, uh, you're the universe. Just take care of it. <laughs> it's a lot easier, yeah. Because really what you're doing is just assigning randomity to it, and then you're not going to be too happy with that. You're going to go, why did this? That's obvious. <laughs> yeah. This is why I get into all this stuff about being a god. I am not questioning or challenging anyone's religious beliefs, or saying that each of us should be worshipped as a supreme being. But what else would you call this thing that is you, and is the source of life and the universe one finds himself in? A god. Yeah, a god. And, and again, like I said, not questioning supreme beings or people's religious beliefs or anything else, but when you consider how powerful you are, and what you are capable of doing, and that, that you are the thing that uh, animates uh, not only this body, but the world around you. And there's no intelligence or power that's greater or stronger or beyond you. I don't know what else you call it. That's a God with a little G. <laughs> In earlier blogs, <clears throat> we talked about man, the God. And this would be at the higher end of the scale that really has no bounds. At the other end would be man, the animal, devoid of any humanity save his own basic needs of food, shelter, and water. Unfortunately, this status knows no bounds either. If one can get their head around this concept, one would find, uh, one would discover himself to be the only salvation available to himself or to anyone else. The being or person himself would then would be the only real therapeutic agent available to him and others. As a god, how afraid would a person be of that which he created? Yeah, that's a good that's a good idea. And ultimately, if you if you want to get beyond all this stuff and all the woo-woo stuff we're talking about, all, all we're basically saying is that when somebody says, here's what you need to do, this is gonna do this for you, or that's gonna do that for you, research it, Make look a at decision. it, evaluate it. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Don't just blindly go in there and, and do what you're told, and now if you're messed up, it's because he messed me up. No, he didn't. I'm messed up because of that drug. You're not messed up because of that drug. You messed yourself up. Understand, by creating, <clears throat> I am talking about the universe one finds himself in. Not necessarily all of the stuff in that universe, but rather his thoughts, the way he acts and reacts and behaves. We always get this idea that we should have been able, you know? I should have been able to prevent that tornado from wrecking my house, or pterodactyls from eating my daffodils. Yeah, maybe, but you can control what you do next. Your actions and reactions, and this 
mocks up the universe one finds himself in and nothing else. Yeah, you get that idea. Yeah, you know, okay, a big storm comes. Oh, well, I should be powerful enough to keep a storm from coming and everything. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe not. I, I, don't, I don't think so. You'll find that the storm actually has a purpose and there is a goodness to that storm. Even if pterodactyls come and eat your daffodils, um, there's a, a, a better or a good purpose to that, even though you lost the daffodils and stuff. And so when these, these disasters or these things happen, it's, you know, you get, oh, I should have stopped it, I should have prevented I should have been able to, I would have, should have, could have, and all the rest of this stuff. But the most important thing is, what do you do next? Now that the pterodactyl has eaten your daffodils, what do you do next? Maybe you go, yeah, go find where the pterodactyl lives and talk to him and tell him, hey, you know, don't eat my daffodils. What, what else do you like? And maybe you put a, a bag of carrots out there for him and he leaves your daffodils alone. I, I, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe he doesn't want to eat any of that, you know, and he wants to somehow fly home to his new, pl to, his, to the planet he came from and he doesn't want to be on Earth. I don't know, but you'll find, go talk to the pterodactyl and, and not have a nature daffodils or eat the roof off your house. Get things sorted out a lot easier. Okay. Let's see. In the past, I've spoken of a very lengthy book called Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. Yeah. <clears throat> it, is a, it is quite a thought-provoking book and one that would certainly be worth a person's while to set aside the time necessary to read it. At the very end of the book, Harari makes a very interesting comment, and if one reads the book, this final, mess, this, this final passage might really get those brain gears churning. Quote, is there anything more dangerous than dissatisfied and irresponsible gods who don't know what they want? He is talking about us, of course, and might this not be an explanation of, of sorts for much of the craziness we see around us? Yeah, that's it. I love that quote. It's exactly what it is. And again, Sapiens is a book that uh, he wrote, and it just basically talks about the evolution of, of man, Homo sapiens, and the line we came up through and stuff. And at the end, that's what he asks, because he comes to the conclusion that we, he, instead of being Homo, de, uh, Homo sapiens, we are evolving into what would be called Homo deus, which is man the god. And uh, he asks, is there anything more dangerous than dissatisfied and irresponsible gods who don't know what they want? Look around, man, and now answer that question. <clears throat> if, one were to if one were to consider the gods of Mount Olympus in Greek and Roman mythology, which might not really be mythology after all. It wasn't mythology. They certainly caused their fair share of mischiefs for, mischief for us mortals but from which man did prevail. These challenges are the manna of life. I know this stuff is all pretty heavy, but one has to consider the other side. You've seen all the commercials for drugs and alcohol, you've been to your medical doctor, and you've watched friends, family, and loved ones suffer and end up poorly. Perhaps I am off my rocker, but look at the alternative. We Americans consume about 75% of the prescription drugs made on the planet. Let's ask ourselves, is that working? Are we healthy and are we, are we healthier and better off? Ooh. Nearly 700,000 people in the U.S. die each year from cardiovascular disease, and we spend over 320 billion dollars annually on drugs that treat cardiovascular disease. Is it working? Yeah, and that's the big question. So you look at all of Dr. Day's crazy woo-woo stuff, and it's like. All I'm basically saying is, you know, maybe maybe you ought to look at things and uh, uh, wear your hat as, as, as a god, as it were, and uh, take responsibility for yourself and others in the world around you, and let's see how that works. Because on the other side, we are four point, the United States comprises 4.25% of the entire population of the world, and yet we consume over 75% of all the prescription drugs made on the planet. So we should be the most mentally healthy you know, country on the planet and you know, our, our rates of everything should be so low that, oh man, we're just out living and we're just not. Actually. Right, if the drugs worked, that would be one thing. $320 billion on pills to treat cardiovascular disease and it along with cancer are like one in two killers on the planet. 
Is it working? Perhaps for the pharmaceutical companies, but I'm not so sure about us. So do we sit and wait for the Grim Reaper to call our number? Or perhaps, 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 do we start to do something to help ourselves, even if this means being a god? We can help you at Paragon Chiropractic. Please let us know. Take care. And bless. Yeah, Dr. David Anderson, and that's exactly right. I love that part. Yeah, I do. I wrote it. It's like, so do we just sit and wait for the Grim Reaper to call our number? Or perhaps, 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 do we start to do something to help ourselves, to help others? Why, why is this the job? Why is our health and our future the job of pharmaceutical companies or science or medicine or, or Google or Amazon or any of this other stuff or, or, or whatever? Why don't we do something? What do we want? Remember, is there anything more dangerous than dissatisfied and irresponsible gods who don't know what they want? Why don't we decide what we want and let's do it and do something about it uh, instead of sitting here uh, uh, waiting to see what happens. Waiting for somebody else or something else to make the decision for you, which you are inevitably going to be upset about because but it's not exactly what I would have. Well, you should have. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody wants to be told what to do. No. And so, I don't know, maybe as a god, maybe you can make a few rules. <laughs> At any rate, good. So let us know. Please uh, like this um, or uh, comment. Uh, or if you please want to comment. talk to it, please comment. Let us know what you think. And uh, get a conversation going. If you, if you disagree with us, tell us why. I would, I, love, mean, I would love to have a conversation. I don't argue. I don't, I don't feel that I'm right. This is just what I think. We want to know what you think too. And, so. and I thought something before, I thought this. This seems to make the most sense. So uh, I'm influenceable. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to talk or comment, please do. I, I'd love to have that conversation with you. All right.